Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and it is Tuesday, September 20th, which is technically a day later than I like to have these usual news update video thingies go on the channel, but I checked out some news yesterday, and there really wasn't much to talk about. There was only one thing I could find that was really news-worthy of mentioning, so I thought we are supposed to be getting some new information about Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon today, Tuesday, so I figured let's just hold off on the news update video thingy until today, and lo, lo and behold... There is a new trailer and some new information on the Sun and Moon website to go over for the new games coming up. So now is a good time to start doing some recording for the video. So a little bit of a different format. I'm not in my widescreen version right now. Normally I would set up my phone camera and record the news part and then come to the video or come to the computer and do the video trailer breakdown. But I thought there's only one thing to mention outside of the video. Let's just do that. Now I will go back and do the pack opening, which I will mention. I do have a booster pack of Primal Clash I'll be opening in the video today at the end. And as always, you guys have a chance to win the code card that I pull out of this pack when I open it up towards the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. I'm just going to participate in the question of the day, which I will give you as I open this up. But before we get to anything else, let's go over last week's question of the day. The question was, which new Pokemon are you most excited to see in battle in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon? Because we've been getting a lot of Pokemon revealed to us. Alola forms, just new Pokemon in general and which ones do you want to see in battle and why. I was talking about wishy-washy. I'm curious to see how does schooling actually work? Is it, it says it's based off of a certain level, so I don't even know. I can't even imagine how wishy-washy's schooling will take effect, but I'm curious to see that. And the winner of last week's code card from the Phantom Forces pack that I opened up, a viewer named Unknown Spike, and Unknown Spike says, I want to see in battle the starter Pokemon, the Ultra Beasts, and the new Pokemon because I don't have the money to buy the game or Nintendo 3DS. I can't wait for your Pokemon Sun and Moon playthrough. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Unknown Spike, and thanks for your continued support on the channel. You're always taking part in the questions of the day, questions of the week, which I really appreciate, and I like getting some feedback and such like that, so good stuff and good congratulations. I was going to say good luck. Congratulations on receiving the Phantom Forces code card from last week. And as I say, for me, I just want to see how schooling works, so anyway, we'll see what happens there. But... That is the question of the day for last week, and again, as I say, I open this towards the end of the video, the Primal Clash pack, another question of the day, with the code card up, to, up for grabs to anybody out there that wants that. And, of course, Primal Clash is currently legal in the Standard format, so these cards will be all good to use in the online game in Standard. So the only thing outside of, well, I shouldn't say the only thing, just some general updates on the channel itself, then one news thing, and then we'll get to the long awaited trailer. But we are currently almost at 900 subscribers on the channel, which is amazing, which is awesome. Thanks everybody who's coming along and joining me on the ride as I do my playthroughs and TCG videos and the news update things for Sun and Moon. I appreciate all the support and interaction that we're getting, and I feel like I'm starting to build a community with you guys. Like, you know, getting some regular people, and we're all just here talking about Pokemon. That's what this is all about, right? So I really appreciate all the people that are joining in and sticking with me. I know I might be boring at times, I might ramble like I'm probably doing right now, but hopefully you appreciate that in some way. Anyway, I will mention that once we do hit 900 subscribers, I'm going to have, now picture if you will, the Victini Mythical Pokemon Collection for TCG on the desk back there, on the dresser. I don't have it yet. My local Pokemon League did not get them in just yet, but as soon as they have them, I'm going to pick that up. Of course, you get your two booster packs of the Generations expansion, the Victini pin, Victini uh, foil promo card, and the code card. I'll be getting that soon, and once we do hit 900 subscribers, which we might do by the end of the month, with, you know, looking the way things are going, I will do an unboxing of the Victini collection on camera and give the code card out and a question of the day for that video as well. So stay tuned for that if and when we hit 900 before the next one comes out. And is it Kelio, I think, is next? can't recall. I can look it up on the website, but anyway, whatever the next Mythical Collection is, I'll be picking that up also. It'll replace the Victini Collection if we haven't yet opened that up. And just in other news, I mentioned in yesterday's Pokemon Sapphire episode, we are less than two months away now from Sun and Moon's release date. I hope you're getting hyped. I'm getting hyped. I'm excited. I want this. I want these games now, but they keep giving us some teaser trailers and stuff, so at least we're getting some stuff, you know, I suppose. But I want to play these games, you know, so less than two months to go. And currently, I have sent away to get a video capture device installed in a 3DS. I sent it down to uh, somewhere in the States. And as of yesterday, I think it was, it did reach its destination. They say it should take a couple days to install and then another week or two to send back to me. So if all goes well, I will have a direct capture device for the 3DS. I can do a nice quality playthrough of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Well, Pokemon Moon is the version I'm getting. I'll have that on the channel. And I might have said this before, but maybe not. It feels like I've been okay. I've been doing Pokemon videos for a little over a year and a half now on YouTube, 
somehow, I don't know, it just feels like Sun and Moon, this game is what this channel has been building to this entire time. Without Before Sun and Moon was even announced, you know? I just somehow feel that's what I've been building towards without even knowing it. So, I don't know, maybe I'm putting too much hype on it, maybe I'm putting too much pressure that the Sun and Moon playthrough is going to be the biggest thing I have. If it is, it is. If not, okay, no big deal. But it just feels like that's what I've been learning how to do such better quality with like the videos and layouts and editing and such. I think I just feel like this is going to be the big one that I've been building towards. Anyway, that's just me rambling, as I say I tend to do. And that is about it for my own mentions for the channel. And I'll mention in the Pokemon TCG, there's a few new Pokemon tins out, like collectible tins. They're called the Battle Heart Tins, as you can see here. They feature a foil promo EX, or for Pokemon EX, of course, four booster packs and one online code card to use in the online game to unlock that foil Pokemon EX in the online game. The Pokemon, as you saw, were Pikachu, Volcanion, and Magearna. I didn't get to see the card art. I couldn't find them on the website, but I think they're probably just basically different art reprints of previous Pokemon EX that we've had. I would imagine it the, uh, say for example, the Volcanion EX is probably the Steam Up one, or the Steam Up ability, and just this different kind of an art for it. Magearna probably is the same one from Steam Siege. And the Pikachu, I would assume, is the Pikachu that's in the red and blue collection back there, which I didn't mention. I always forget to mention this till the end of the video, but once we hit a thousand subscribers on the channel, I'm going to unbox that on camera, give the code card out in a question of the day for that also. But I also want to pick up another copy of the collection, if this one is still out, if not I'll pick up another Pokemon collection, and do a physical mail out of the actual box to somebody through the mail, and they'll get a copy of the actual box, the cards and everything, as a sort of a throwback to you guys for hitting the 1000 subscriber mark on the channel. So if you're not currently subscribed, feel free to do so. I do believe that is all that there is to mention. Now's the time to check out this trailer. Now, as I said, I think last time I did a trailer, I think we're allowed to show the American trailer or the English translation trailer. The Japanese one is the one that gets claimed, but since I'm not claiming money on any ad revenue to begin with, I think I'm pretty safe. So... I want to go now to the Pokemon website and see what all it says for the breakdown of information because the trailer shows you a lot of good visuals, but you want to get your uh, more detailed information, you come here to the Pokemon Sun and Moon website. What is Pokemon Refresh exactly? Like I say, I would assume it takes the place of... Can I click it? There we go. I would assume it takes the place of Pokemon Me. Now, something I noticed in X and Y over to Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, if you had max affection with your Pokemon in X and Y, that carried over into Sun and... Not Sun and Moon. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. So, if you have max affection with them in Gen 6, will they still have max affection in Gen 7? And if so, does that affect Pokemon Refresh? We see here all these Pokemon being catered to. Um, that's How back here, isn't it, I think? With the, uh, the Young Goose. You might want to watch your hand there, How. That looks like it's in a bit of a dangerous spot with all those teeth. Anyway, Pokemon Refresh. Use the Pokemon Refresh feature to care for your Pokemon. After a battle, Pokemon sometimes end up all dirty. Oh, okay. When that happens, you can take care of them and get them all cleaned up. By caring for your Pokemon, you can also cure status conditions like poisoning and paralysis that were inflicted on your Pokemon in battle. No need for items anymore! Actually, no, there's probably going to be probably need for items. Pokemon that have grown very affectionate, thanks to petting them a lot and feeding them their beloved Poke Beans, will battle to the utmost for you. Sometimes they'll avoid attacks from opposing Pokemon, and even hold out when they're on the verge of fainting. Take good care of your Pokemon with Pokemon Refresh, and they'll be great allies on your adventure. So this basically is like Pokemon Ami. You could gain some of those features of dodging hits, landing more critical hits, breaking through the status conditions in battle, so it sounds like it's kind of the same thing. Brush the dirt from Alolan Vulpix. Cure Spearow's poisoning. Release Eevee from Paralysis. We saw this in the trailer. Pokemon love Poke Beans. Pikachu is delighted to be petted. So, that is looking like the new Pokemon Ami feature. But, let's go back and check out the Pokemon section and see these new Pokemon. So, we're going to start off with the version of Lycanroc. I think I should be able to scroll back to the other ones. The Midnight Form, Pure Rock, of course. When Rockruff is bathed in an abundance of lunar energy, it evolves into its Midnight Form. In the world of Pokemon Moon, Lunala's influence causes Rockruff to evolve into this form. Midnight Form Lycanroc provokes its opponents by pressing in hard and inviting their attack. When an opponent falls for this tactic and attacks, Lycanroc counters with its forte, a single devastating blow that finishes off its foe. I would assume that means it's going to learn counter in this case. 
The stronger its opponent, the more excited for battle Lycanroc becomes. I could also see it getting something like, uh, what is that, Foul Play, that does more damage based on the opponent's attack. It doesn't mind getting hurt if it means victory in battle. Battles thrill it so much that its eyes glow. Contempt rises in this Pokemon for trainers who give it orders it doesn't agree with or who try to force it to battle. On the other hand, it will feel a deep trust in a trainer who can truly draw forth its power in battle. Yet, yeah, Counter is a move that Rockruff can learn when it evolves into Midnight Form Lycanroc. When Lycanroc takes physical damage from an opponent, it deals double that. Okay, we know what Counter does. Look at the art here, too. Very cool. So I was considering adding it onto the team in Pokemon Moon, but I was hoping it would become a dark type, because I don't have a lot of dark types in the collection. I might still do it? I don't know. We'll have to see what happens as I go through. But let's check out the midday form of Lycanroc. When Rockruff is bathed in solar energy, it evolves into the midnight form, Solgaleo's influence causes it. Lycanroc solo in mountains and deserts, not creating a pack, but it's a lone wolf. Each has its own territory, and they live without interfering with one another, which helps to avoid unnecessary fights. Lycanroc obeys its trainer's orders dutifully. In particular, if a trainer accepted it during its more rebellious pre-evolution period, Lycanroc will never betray that trainer, and will be the most loyal of partners. The midday form Lycanroc is known for speedy movements that leave its opponent bewildered. Extreme speed, maybe? It dodges po opponent's strikes while attacking with the sharp rocks of its mane as it slips right past them. Accelerock Acceler is a move that only midday form Lycanroc can learn. It slams into an opponent with quick moves. This move is guaranteed to strike first, so a quick attack version, or a rock type quick attack. I don't think we've had that yet. Very cool. I wonder if there's going to be more power, though, than just a basic quick attack, aqua jet, shadow sneak, things like that. It could be maybe an extreme speed power. I don't know, that is just random speculation. But look at look at the art for this too. Like I say, I like the design of this better than the uh, the nighttime version for some reason. I don't know, it just gives me the Wolf Link vibe. Alright, so let's scroll over to... The next one would be the Pessimian, I believe. No, Oranguru, the Sage Pokemon, normal psychic. Oranguru is a Pokemon that appears only in Pokemon Moon. Hey, my version! You can obtain it by trading if you're playing Sun. Oranguru lives solitarily... All Oranguru live solitary lives deep in the forest and do not usually take much attention. Instead, they position themselves high up in the trees to meditate. Long ago, people thought that Oranguru were humans who dwelled in forest depths, so they called them the people of the forest. Oranguru is kind to the other Pokemon living in the forest, providing medicine for injured Pokemon and food for the hungry. Oranguru sometimes act on their own initiative and will use items that only humans normally use. Oh! I was just doing or talking about this in Pokemon Sapphire I recorded today. You'll see that later on. The fact that Pokemon can't use man-made held items, but this sounds like maybe Oranguru can. From a trainer's perspective, they can be hard Pokemon to handle at times. Allegedly, there have been sightings of Oranguru using Pokeballs. I can see this being a totem Pokemon. What do you guys think? Actually sending in Pokemon into battle in one of the totem challenges. The fan-like objects held by Oranguru are handmade by the Oranguru themselves. These fans appear to be made of layers of leaves bound together with Oranguru's own fur. Instruct is a move that only Oranguru can learn. It can make the selected target use its most recent move again immediately, so it just basically uses a double attack. With that telepathy, as we saw, Oranguru is immune to the surf attack of its partner Pokemon, so having Wishy-Washy use that same move twice. Alright, I see. Very cool. Now let's check out Passimian. I like how... I'm not trying to talk myself up here, but I like how quickly I learn the new names and remember them so well of these new Pokemon. Like, anytime a new Pokemon comes out, I almost immediately lock its name into memory. So, again, not trying to brag or anything, it's just kind of a neat, neat, neat little ability that I have. It is the Teamwork Pokemon, fighting type. Passimian is only in Pokemon Sun. They live in troops of 20 to 30 individuals, almost like a sports team, following a leader. This leader will take 10 of these individuals in the best condition to search for food. The troop's teamwork is strong, and the boss of each troop decides what mark members will wear on their arms to distinguish the troops. Looks like the green sort of leaf patches on that Pokemon. The boss puts the troop members through training to improve their coordination with one another and their skill in handling berries. Apparently, this training is so hard that some Passimian end up running away. That's kind of sad. Lobbing berries at foes is how Passimian attack. They sometimes work in coordination with others, passing berries back and forth to bewilder their opponents. Passimian, this is almost like dodgeball. Passimian don't just pitch hard berries at opponents either. They also have a technique that uses soft berries to obscure their opponent's ability to see. Passimian wants its trainer to have the qualities of a leader as well. It watches a trainer's form closely when he or she throws Pokeballs, and will not listen to the orders of a trainer with poor form. Wouldn't it be something if they incorporated a new way to throw Pokeballs, or a different style of throwing Pokeballs, and it actually affected with this Pokemon, how it interacts with you? I don't see that happening, but it's possible. They're doing so many new things with these new games. The new ability Receiver 
With the receiver ability, this Pokemon can inherit the ability of an ally who faints in battle, as I said during the trailer. So that is all for the new Pokemon. Anything in the Alola region? Because sometimes they like to sneak a little bit extra information somewhere. We already talked about the Ultra Beasts. I Did I talk about this? Yes, I did. In like the uh, last video I put up. Aether Foundation, blah, 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 blah. Everything is the same here, it looks like. Anything in the cool features? Probably the... Well, there's the Pokemon exclusive Z-moves. Eevee gets a boost from every one of the evolutions. That is kind of crazy. And this is new. Po Sword Pokemon in the updated bank. There is Pokemon Refresh. Uh, we're going to check out this first. Dress for success with a low of fashions. Maybe we'll get a breakdown of everything that we have. In Pokemon Sun and Moon, you can change things like your character's clothing, hairstyle, and even eye color. Adventure through Alola while choosing your own flair for fashion. You can change the look of your clothing with colorful dyes. Perhaps there's a design you like, but you prefer it in a different color. Oh, now you can make that wish come true. Awesome. I am a fan of the color purple, so you're probably going to see me donning a lot of purple clothes as we go through the Moon playthrough. What do we have in the gallery? Put your personal look together. Just showing off a couple different styles there. Probably the same thing down here. You can dye items a new color, or dye white items a new color, okay. The same designs take on a whole new look. This is almost like in Animal Crossing when you can have Cyrus, what is it, refurbish some of the furniture for you. So let's go back to the cool features. We're just about done checking out the site. Last thing I want to check out here is the Pokemon Bank. Store Pokemon in the updated Pokemon Bank. So you can bring, you can send Pokemon from, shows black, white, black two, white two, into, up to the bank, it says, yeah. I'm not even going to try making sense of this map. I'm just going to go ahead and... So we see, okay. We can do a permanent transfer from the red, blue, and yellow versions for the uh, 3DS Virtual Console. Those go to the bank. We can transfer back and forth. No, wait. They're making two versions of the bank, it looks like. Pokemon not sent to Sun and Moon can continue to be used in XY or Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. So, the bank is going to have connectability still with X and Y, and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, so Gen 6 and Gen 7. It looks like, though, once you send them to Sun and Moon, you can't bring them back to the previous generations, which makes sense. They've done that with other Pokemon generations along the way. In January 2017, the 3DS downloadable software Pokemon Bank is expected to receive an update for compatibility with Sun and Moon. Pokemon Bank is an app that enables you to put Pokemon you've collected into your games into the internet-based storage boxes. Until now, it's been available only for Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, X and Y. Starting in early 2017, it'll be for Sun and Moon. With this update, Pokemon that adventured with you in the Gen 6 games will be able to join you in Sun and Moon. If you transfer a Pokemon to the bank, then to Sun or Moon, you'll be unable to transfer it back to Gen 6, of course. You can't deposit Pokemon holding items to the bank. If you try to deposit a Pokemon with a held item, that item will be sent back to the original game. That's what they did along the way anyways. And Poke Transporter also updated. The Poke Transporter is being updated for compatibility with the Virtual Console versions of Red, Blue, and Yellow Pikachu Edition. Deposit the Pokemon you collected into the bank, and you can send them to Sun and Moon as well. So we knew that was going to be a thing, of course. They mentioned that way back when Sun and Moon was first announced. If you use the Transporter to move Pokemon from the Virtual Console to... They can only be sent to Sun and Moon. They can't be sent to Gen 6. Pokemon moved to the back using the transporter can't be sent back down to the Virtual Console games. Or to the Black 2, White 2, Black or White versions. You can't send items... You can't send Pokemon with items to the bank. That item will be sent back to the original game. A new National Pokedex feature is coming to help you check out the particulars of the Pokemon you deposited. So it looks like the bank itself is getting a Pokedex. Yep, it's getting a Pokedex feature. The application will read your save data from any games, asterisk. The games can connect. The games that can connect with this Pokedex function are Sun, Moon, and Gen 6. Collecting information about Pokemon you've caught so you can check it. Using the Pokedex feature in the bank, you'll be able to see this information, even about Pokemon that don't appear in the Alola region of Sun and Moon. The service fee information... Yeah, service fee. So, it is a fee-based thing to use Pokemon Bank, but for a full year, it's only $4.99 tax included so it's like it's worth your money you get 3,000 storage on Pokemon Bank online one year activation comes in the form of an annual pass so that is just some information about how the Sun and Moon is going to be compatible with Pokemon Bank it's being updated early 2017 we knew that was going to be a thing anyway I do believe that is all that we're going to mention for the news it is just about time to crack into the Primal Clash where I can give the code card out to some lucky viewer well one lucky viewer that answers the excuse me question of the day but before we do that 
My question of the day for today, and the drawing for this code card is going to be done on this coming Sunday, September 25th. So you have till then to get your answers in and use hashtag QOTD in your comment. So I can do a search on all the comments and get just the uh, responses to the question and go from there. But anyway, the question of the day, I had it in mind. I was going to wait and see if there's anything new information-wise from today that might change my question. But I think I'm going to stick with the original question. For those of you that are picking up Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon when they come out, which Pokemon have you chosen to be on your main team in Sun and Moon? If you have made a choice, maybe you haven't yet, you want to wait and see what random chance gives you. But if there are any Pokemon that you do want to see on your main team, let me know which ones you're thinking of. Like, we've seen a lot of Pokemon from these new games already. New region-exclusive ones, some of the new version-exclusive ones also. And if you're not going to be getting Pokemon Sun and Moon, like Unknown Spike said earlier, not everybody has the money to get these new games or a new system just yet. Which ones would you like to make a team out of? of these new Pokemon that are being revealed. You know, do you want to go single type, like all water type or something? Or do you want to go more standard core type, like water, grass, fire, electric, and a couple others, like psychic fighting maybe? Those are the uh, the first six types that were in the Pokemon TCG, now that I think about it. But anyway, leave your comment down below. Which Pokemon do you want to add onto your team in Sun and Moon? Hashtag QOTD in your comment. And on Sunday the 25th, everybody that answers that question with hashtag QOTD has a chance to win the Primal Clash code card. I'm about to pull out of the pack as we get into this right now. So with Pikachu eagerly anticipating what cards we get out of the booster pack, let's open up Primal Clash right now, the earliest of the now standard legal format in the Pokemon TCG. So of course, we're going to grab that code card and slip it to the side until the 25th. There we go. You guys have a chance to win that just by entering that question of the day. But for the time being, let's see what I get out of this particular pack of the physical cards. Let's Folks in nice and close, and start off with the commons of Torchic. And this is where the uh, ancient traits first came in, I believe. Spiel, have a Trap Inch, a Nidoran female, and a Slugma. Now the uncommon card, starting with a Rhydon. Pretty powerful horn drill there for 70. We have a Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick. You can only play this card if it's the last card in your hand. Put a Fighting Pokemon from your discard pile onto the bench, and then draw five cards. Next uncommon, we have a Weakness Policy tool that reduces or eliminates the weakness that the Pokemon has that's holding this. Reverse Foil card is going to be a Hone Edge. Nice and shiny Hone Edge. The rare card of Primal Clash is... Ooh! Excellent! I love this card! Swampert. Ancient Trait. First of all, the ability of Diving Search. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for a card, shuffle your deck, and then put that card on top. If you have a way to draw a card on that same turn, it's essentially like you get to choose whatever card you want every turn. Couple, uh, couple that with, say, Scorched Earth, Tierno. Anything that lets you draw a card off the top. Very nice. It's not currently standard legal anymore. It's an expanded format version kind of a, a deck, but I like to combine this with the Phantom Forces Slurpuff that lets you draw a card once per turn. Do this first, play that Slurpuff ability, and you choose a card, draw it. You get one card every turn that you want. Anyway, Alpha Growth. You may... When you attach an energy from your hand to this Pokemon, you may attach two energy cards. So you can attach a second one to Swampert. And Hydro Pump does 40 plus 30 more damage for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. Definitely some nice power and some draw support and just some energy acceleration all in one Pokemon. This I would have expected to be a Pokemon EX, but it's not. It's a regular Swampert. Very nice. You get to stand back there next to the EX collection Swampert. You've earned it just by being who you are. Anyway, so that's what I got out of the cards today. Hopefully whoever wins this code card on the 25th this coming Sunday has just as much luck as I did, if not more. So, by the way, answer that question of the day for your chance to win that code card. Question is, for those of you getting the games, which Pokemon have you chosen to be on your main team in Pokemon Sun and Moon, if any? If you're not sure yet, just feel free to say you're going to wait and let me, or let random chance decide what's going to show up for you. If you're not getting the games, just let me know which Pokemon that you would like to have on your teams if you were to get these games. All that being said, that's going to round out the news update for today, everybody. I want to say thank you for checking it out, and come on back later on today for our second episode of Pokemon Sapphire for the day as we take our new trainee Pokemon, Burrow the Ninkata, try to get powered up for our first gym battle coming later on this week. Professor Chaz is now signing off. Thanks once again for checking out the news update, and I'll catch you next time.